seemed like early on in the season, Antonio wasn't really <coughs> sure of himself. Maybe didn't know exactly how he yeah. fit or where his <laughs> offense should come. It, it feels like over these last few games, he's really settled into what yeah. what he can do. Maybe believes a little bit more that he can kind yeah. of play up at this level. Um, I would say. At the beginning, when we started, many guys did not have a lot of confidence. They did not believe in how good they were. Um, until now, when we start losing now, now they say we got to step up. Now Antonio is stepping up. Now everybody's stepping up. Now it's not, a, it's not high school anymore. This is a big boys game. If you don't step, if you don't stepping up, they're going to send you home. Oscar, you talked about, you talked about last game how you, at one point you even pulled the team into your room and right. met with them. Mm -hmm. Does do you feel like the camaraderie is kind of pulling you guys through this right now of you guys kind of being together and playing as a team? Yes, now we are going together because I told him when we won, everybody benefits something. When we lose, it doesn't matter how good you look. It just you look bad because the team is not winning. You're not going anywhere. So motivated them with the word of God. Tell him, um, stay away from trouble, come see me, we can pray, we can talk about God, because God is the one helping us with a lot of things. Now they start like, they start to listen to me a little more too, but um, we got many guys who are stepping up as a leader. I love Kaysen, Kaysen is stepping up as a leader. CJ, Lance, everybody, when they see somebody not doing good, somebody not doing what they're supposed to do, they bring them together, hey, can I be doing that? We're gonna go see the coach. Can I do that? So that's why the team right now seems more focused. When everybody on the outside is sort of against you or feels that way and criticizing you, is, does that make a more natural bond? Like everybody inside that room's got to sort of get closer together. When you mean, uh, what do you mean? Uh, like, like when everything was bad, you know, two weeks ago, and everybody's basically like Kentucky's done, and you guys in that locker room, kind of all you have is each other. Is that is that help? That yeah, bonding I, process, does the that one make thing you I force you guys to be closer to each other? I told him, um, uh, let's just take whatever negative is out there to be a motivation. And we know how good we are. We know we got better shoes, we got people can attack the we got we got many guys. So many teams we see they don't have the talent we have. Let's go to work. And now everybody believes in themselves. Now time to work to help the team. We start we now together. That's uh, I'm loving it. How significant is it to finish off these games too? Like that feels like a big part of this. That that in, in each of these games there was a chance you could still, even if you'd played pretty well, that you could lose it at the end. And, we can lose. And you guys finished off the. All three um, of them. I, I give her like a um, lot of credit to the coach because they uh, they teaching us how we should stay focused at the end of the game because uh, there was a couple games we used to struggle at the end, but now they teach us a lot of things how to stay focused, to stay calm down, make turnovers, to stay locked in. That's the kind of game we're going to be facing. This team is coming with a lot of confidence because they were 5-0 in our league. They were expecting to be Kentucky, but we were waiting for them. Oscar, you did you get the chance to meet the young man from Missouri? I met the boy, yeah. Finally? Yes, I met him today. Um, and I thank his, his mother because uh, she brought him here. I just appreciate him. I say um, thank you very much for taking care of that kid. Um, that's what God wants us to do. Uh, to helping each other. And I encourage that boy, say, keep up good work. And I told him, when I first came to America, I did not know how to play basketball. I did two years not playing basketball because I was so bad, I was sitting on the, the last person on the bench. But I could not stop believing myself and work out it. Look where I am, just work out and believe in God. So the kid, I, I think he believed that. How physical was today's game compared to maybe the last couple of weeks? It was a lot of physical today, a lot of physical, because uh, these people, they were just pushing. You see me go against uh, 34. He was a physical guy. Like, we would just go against each other, take up the goal. Yeah. It was just a tough matchup for me and him. Um, I told even my teammate, no, I'm good. I would just take out my gun. Um, yeah, let's, let's <laughs> Huh? No, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, it was tough because um, we knew uh, they were physical. They were sending. I don't even know how they let me grab 17 rebound because they send it three people on me every time. I don't know. Some basketball just found me. I uh, just found me. Whatever I am, just come to me. Um, I was just fighting too. They got me out first. Um, uh, first half, I was a little bit in foul trouble. But second half, I just said, let me go fight.
Oscar, on a, on a night when you're in foul trouble yes. and you only score seven points, you have your teammates that stepped up and made huge plays down the stretch. Mm -hmm. How important is that for this team moving forward? It is very important, especially if I'm out, my teammates are making shots. The one thing that kills us is when nobody's making shots. It is very tough to win a game when somebody's not making shots. The only way to win a game when uh, nobody's making shots is to defend and grab every rebound. Um, that's the only thing. But I'm so happy for my teammates because they're stepping up. They, they are doing great. Not even stepping up, they're just realizing they are very good. Uh, what, what I'm doing right now is not what I'm supposed to be doing. Like, I'm better than that. Let me just walk like if, uh, Antonio. I give you a lot of credit for him because he's stepping up now. He's just playing. I told him, you ain't got nothing to lose. Just play. I told him, I motivate all of them. Now we are good. We're going to keep fighting. Oscar, you guys uh, changed up pregame uh, routine, staying in a hotel. Yes. Uh, what, what was the story behind that and like what, what effect did it have? In I think um, that is a great idea from coach because you want to keep some of the youngest focused because sometimes they're trying to stay up too late on their phones. <laughs> um, so it's better. I think it's a better idea for, for taking a phone at 10.30. So everybody by 11, we got to go to bed. Yeah, um, if you don't have a phone, those youngest, you don't have a phone, you don't have anything, I believe they're going to go to sleep. So um, for me, I'm taking my phone, I'll just, after 10.30, it's my time to read the Bible. So I'm just reading Bible and fall asleep. It is a great idea for, for my prospect. Oscar, when you get involved... Well, Antonio, what, what was working for you today? Man, my three balls going in. Oh, teammates was looking for me down the stretch, you know, and a couple shots went in for me, so. There's a lot of talk about, you know, you're, you were getting shots in the early non-conference, but not making them against big big time opponents and big time mm -hmm. matchups. Now this, you kind of had this one to hang on to. Just what, what did it feel like to kind of hit those crucial shots in a big game? Man, it felt great, you know. I feel like I've been working hard. I feel like it just paid off well, as soon as I got in the game. And, you know, some of them was open. So I would be able to take my time and just relax when I was out there. And, you know, they was end up following. That, that lineup with you and CJ on the floor together, you guys talked about it earlier on in the year, just kind of how valuable it could be having those two shooters on the floor. Now that you guys see it in action, just what, what does that feel like? Man, it feels great. You know, I, uh, I got another shooter out there, you know, I can rely on. And, you know, we stress the floor a lot when we out there, you know, uh, on each side. So, you know, if, you know, Oscar is getting double teamed down there, you, uh, Oscar was able to kick it out to one of us and, you know, end up, you know, making shots, you know, down steps. And, you know, see Fred out there too, and you'd be able to make shots again. Yeah. Antonio, I mean, Oscar's in foul trouble. He only scores seven points, but other guys were able to step up and get you guys over the finish line like yourself. How important is that for this team as a whole moving forward? Oh, it's very important. And knowing guys can step up, you know, it's, it means a lot, you know. It means like it's, a, it's more leadership on the team that, you know, is, is there. So, you know, me, C. Fred, or Oscar, you know, Oscar, you know, brings leadership too, you know, even if he did have seven points, you know, he brings leadership with rebounding and, you know, other things talking on the floor, so. For you guys, you guys have been building the last two or three games to something. How important was it to not take a step back today and get this one? It was very important, you know. We talk about it as a team all the time in the locker room, just, you know, how important it is just to get back, you know, to a rhythm. And that's what we did today. We just stayed out of the team, we stayed focused, and you know, relied on each other, had each other back out there. It, that that lineup that you guys have been kind of leaning on down the stretch of games, where you know Kaysen's running the point, you and CJ's in the game with Jacob and, and Oscar. Mm -hmm. Does that align up? How much freedom does that give you as somebody that's? It seems like you guys are a little bit more open at times. Yeah, we are. Uh, there was double Oscar, and Oscar was able to you know make plays down there, and you know. A couple guys left me open. And I was able to just, you know, relax and, you know, take my time out there and, you know, make open shots. And, you know, just for like C. Fred and Casey too, they had open shots as well out there and, you know, was able to make them. So that's what it was. Antonio, 32 three-point attempts as a team, most in more than 10 years for Kentucky. Is, is that something you guys saw coming in that you thought you could do this in this game? Or is that something that just kind of happened within the flow of the game? <clears throat> no, it happened with, within a flow. Like, I didn't realize we took that many threes. And you know we, we was able to make some, so that's a good thing. We able to get the dub, so you know that was that was big. Did Cal mention at all the rate that you guys were, were shooting, or what was he saying, especially in those early timeouts when when they weren't going at first? Oh, well, he mentioned it at the end of the game. He was like, you know, that was the most well my team has ever took in a game before. So you know we we didn't realize we were shooting at that rate, but 
you know, they were open threes and we, we needed to take them, you know, so that's what we did. Was the tone that he said that in? Is that do you think it could happen? Continue to happen this season that you guys shoot that many, or was he was he also kind of surprised by that? No, he wasn't surprised. He knew that we had shooters, so you know he wasn't surprised. And you know we three point shooters out there, so <laughs> we we hunt threes, and you know we look at to to shoot those threes. So you know it, it could happen. You know at, uh, later on games. Were you surprised at how open you were, even when Oscar wasn't in the game? Um, kind of. You know, I just. You know, play throughout the game, just be able to relax on them over threes. You know, I, I see in the comments. So, you know, yeah, earlier throughout the game, I didn't realize it until, you know, at the end. So, you know, I would just be able to, you know, take a dribble or even just take my time out there and just knock them down. How do you feel about the way you guys are making the extra pass these days? Oh, it looked good out there, to be honest. You know, it was one time we, like, she was passing it so fast, and we was able to just give it to one another. And it actually looked good out there, and I was surprised by it. Why? Because, we, you know, normally, you know, like earlier throughout the season, it wasn't, you know, moving as much as it was. But Is it something you've worked on now? Yeah, yeah, practice, yeah. for sure. You paying know. off? Yeah, it's paying off, you know. In practice, we, we work on that stuff all the time. So. Do you and CJ <laughs> you take requests? Yeah, what's on? <laughs> Everybody says rebounds, right? So, so, do you feel like you guys played a pretty good tune today? Yeah, I like you today. Yeah, uh, I think we played good. Uh, halftime, you know, we went into you know second half down, but you know, not a situation that we weren't in, you know, last week when we got against Georgia. But just kind of being resilient and just keep on fighting, and you know, things are going to happen. We're going to make shots and stuff. You know, it happened for us. You guys have been building, maybe though, over the last two or three games. How important was it to get this to keep moving forward with what you guys have been building? On? Yeah, this was a this was a big win for us. Uh, being able to come out, uh, you know, beat a good team and just keep the momentum going because we have some big games going up, and that, that's what we need. Also, your your big guy over there is in foul trouble. Only cool. scores. He's so, always fouled. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they just don't call it all the time, but he always fouls. He he was in foul trouble. He, he doesn't have the 35 and 27, but you had other guys step up. How yeah. important is that? To, to Jacob, see? Tone, uh, CJ, everybody, they made their plays and they made their shots. So it's big. You know, having him is like a luxury, but, you know, we can still win even when he has. It sounds crazy, even when he has like 10 and whatever. How many rebounds do you have? All right, what's that story here with the uh, Oh, I just learned how to, I'm trying to learn how to play. So, like, next week, if I get media again, I might be able to play a little song for y'all. This is actually Grant's, but I'm going to get my own tomorrow. Lance, is this the most physical game of the season? Uh, no. Uh, it, was, it was physical. Their big man was physical, but I think Tennessee might have been a little bit more physical, all, all the guard positions and stuff like that, but... Do you think teams are trying to test your physicality because maybe that was the MO a month ago? Hey, yeah. hit these guys in the mouth, they won't hit back. Yeah, I think that is, uh, especially them trying to go out of Oscar early and, you know, be physical with him and, you know, get him a quick foul. And then it kind of changes the dynamic of our team. But, well, you know, something that we're getting better at and we're matching their physicality and obviously being more physical than them at most points. You came in early and made an impact. What did you feel like you had to bring to our uh, the same stuff. I bring energy, effort, uh, rebounds. Um, if I see like you know guys being physical, kind of match their physicality, and you know bring my own physicality and help help the team win. How'd you feel you did? I regard. feel like I did okay. I did good. Just okay. Yes, sir. <laughs> I always can do better. Cal says you guys came and stayed over here. Yeah, we stayed at. Uh, oh shoot. <laughs> we stayed at uh, the Hyatt. Yeah. What was that like? It was cool. It was different. We never did that before, but I mean, I'm pretty sure that next game we'll probably be be at the hotel again. Uh, but I mean, we we're guys are chilling out, playing video games, and just hanging. With hotels and no more phones before night. Yeah, the, the phones. Like I said phones done at 10:45, and uh, hotel room. So not much to do. Just just hang out with each other. So, but it's what we need. It's you know, good team bonding and just play video games and just chill. Yeah, more time for you. More time for Yuki Lele. Yep. I need to learn some more songs or how to play this thing. What do you, what do you think Cal's up to with taking the phones and the hotel and all that? Uh, probably just hotel. I know what it is. He'd probably just keep us together. Uh, you know, if we stay at the lodge, you know, people are in their rooms. And, you know, we just need to be together right now. Uh, phones, the phones are a distraction. Uh, everything is, everything is, you know, social media, text. You always have people texting you, calling you. Uh, so sometimes if you don't, you know, have that taken away from you, you know, be up all night talking to somebody about something that's probably not the best for you to hear, so. So you know, 
coach and others that said stay off media. It's, it's almost hard to do it unless they take the phone away. Yeah, we grew up, I grew up with a phone. You know, it might be easy for you know some older person, you know, to not have a phone because you know they spent probably half their life without one. But yep. I've always had a phone, so. But it's just something that if you can get off of it for you know a few hours, a few hours out of the day, just not like before you go to bed, it helps. So you think it's working then? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, guys are just focused and just, you know. How do you explain the dramatic turnaround from South Carolina loss to three straight, not just wins, but really impressive wins? We had a good uh, team meeting. I think we had a really good team meeting. That was part of the problem that we like addressed some problems and you know found some solutions and we t you know just came together as a team. And those aren't like feel good moments those are some pretty tough things being said to each other yeah but it's like real stuff being yeah. said you know uh you, nobody wants to always like you know we want to be told the truth and we're holding each other accountable and we said people need to do this and we need to do this and we need to have this kind of attitude and we need to approach stuff certain ways and you know everybody <laughs> has something to say everybody listened to each other and everybody obviously we're responding that's easier said than done yeah yeah, Antonio a floater. He came down the middle at the end of the game, uh, broke the press, came down, hit a floater. Everybody on the bench was like, wow. That was a big time bucket, uh, huge bucket. Like, that's high risk, high reward. Like, if he missed that, you know, everybody was like, oh my gosh. But, you know, he has a great floater, practices them all the time, great player. So, what other instruments you play besides that? I used to play uh, the saxophone when I was in like fifth grade, and then I did trumpet for like a week, but then I quit. This wild uh, Grant had one, and this is Grant's, but he was trying to teach me before I came out. So that's all I know so far. But I'll, I'll learn. He's talking about the team meeting. Everybody says, "I want to hear the truth." Sometimes that's harder than you think it is when somebody tells you. Yeah, uh, but I mean, we're all, you know, men. We can handle it. Uh, everybody has something to say, and it wasn't just like you know we're picking on anybody, you know. We just had to become real with each other and it was like, this isn't going the way that we wanted to go. And like, you know, winning one game and then losing a game and winning a game, like the losing, like the feeling of losing isn't, isn't fun. So we all had that common goal. Like, well, we don't want to feel that anymore. So they're not saying that we're never going to lose a game or we're never going to do anything, but we just know what that feels like. We were down, you know, we were at, we were at a low point. Uh, you know, all, all of us. How much of a shock was that for you guys? Because the Bahamas went so well and so many high expectations. Yeah. How surprising was it you find yourself where you were? It was. It was really surprising, but it's all about how you bounce back. You know, it was. It was we were down. You know, we, everything weren't things weren't going our way at first, but just to be able to you know be where we are today and you know keep building on what we have to do. That's what it's about. Were you all expecting to get that many open threes throughout the game? Was that yeah. or that just kind of came? Kind of yeah, no, nah, we expected it. The way they play defense, if you like look, as soon as anybody <laughs> posts the ball, the weak side, you know, the weak side guy is doubling or in the lane. So if you have two people on the corner wing, somebody's open, somebody dives, somebody's open over the top. Uh, like Cal said, we shot 30 something threes. 32. Yeah, 32 threes. And he said that we never shoot 32 threes. And it's probably one of the most like amount of threes that one of his teams have taken in a game. But if you look at the film, like none of them were contested. Like everyone was wide open. So it was like shots you had to take. And it was, you know, we missed some, but, you know, we made a few in a row and it kind of opened up the game. Chris had two threes, which were huge, and kind of opened up the game for us. It was your most since 2011, I think, okay. was the most threes. I did notice that, like, Oscar was even getting to the point where the ball was coming to him. He wasn't looking to go. He yeah, was just, just straight passing it. So. Yeah, yeah, like, that's the that's what they're known for. That's what they do every year. They, you know, flood the weak side. So if, if people, either, people are either diving or, you know, CJ tone in the corner, you know, that's why we talked about, like, Having CJ and Tone in this game, being able to make shots is huge because they're going to be open. Do you have to tell a guy like CJ to keep shooting? Uh, you know, sometimes, but like it's not the fact that he doesn't want to shoot. But you know, if he's missing, he th he might think that okay, well maybe let me pass up one, and we tell him no, shoot it. You know, like that's what you're here for. You defend and you shoot threes for us, and you're a leader for us. So you know, we're living or dying, you know, with your threes, and you you have the ability to make them. So shoot them.